Today, the S&P 500 broke out to a brand new 52-week high. Are the rest of the indices just lagging behind? First up, let's take a look at a daily chart of the S&P 500's buy ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So first things first, yes, I was wrong. We did not get the lower high on SPY. And surprisingly, we gapped up and held the gap and closed near the high of the day and got the bull breakout to another higher high. So today, I just want to start by looking at the year-to-date chart of SPY. And in just looking at this chart, you can clearly see we are still in a very powerful bull trend. And that is evident by today's price action breaking out to another year-to-date high. So ironically enough, one of the calls that I'm incorrect on is obviously the bearish one. And that's just a reminder how difficult it is to trade against the trend. I still think that was a very low-risk trade and I still think it had a very good chance of working out. But obviously the bull trend is just too strong and there's still too many people getting short squeezed out of this market. And I think a lot of the price action today in SPY was simply just a lot of shorts getting caught off sides with that giant gap up and then getting squeezed out all day long, and that's why we likely pushed out to a new high. So keep in mind, when people are short selling the market, they're going to put their stops above the previous high, and that is likely where they're going to get squeezed when price action starts to break through those levels, and they realize they are now taking on too much risk and need to exit. So this is just simply a chart of the candles of the year-to-date chart with no lines on the chart and nothing other than price action, simply because that is all you need to identify a trend of higher highs and higher lows. Now, if we put the indicators and the lines back on the chart, you can see with today's breakout, we are starting to get a higher high breakout above 442. And the next upside cluster of price targets that I have is between 448 and 453, with that middle target right around 451. So usually when you get a breakout, you are going to squeeze the shorts, which means we could go a little bit higher. But I think there's a good chance we will fill that gap before we go into the 450s, and that gap is down there at 438.28. So we know gaps typically get filled, but we just have no idea when. So don't rule out the possibility we just go straight into the 450s and then fill that gap at a later date once we hit those price targets. We never know exactly how the price action is going to move. That's why we look at the chart every single day and figure out how to trade it and where to manage risk from. So right now, if you want to stay bullish, you can manage your risk at the breakout at 442 or still using that rising 20 daily moving average, which means your risk is going to be right around 436 or the gap fill just above 438. So the strong support in SPY needs to be a higher low now, and we're going to go ahead and say we need to stay above 436. So I think that's a great risk level if you don't mind giving it a little more wiggle room. Today, we did go up on increasing volume, but I do think a lot of that was the short sellers getting squeezed, but higher volume is higher volume nonetheless. So we have a bull trend, which means we are still expecting higher prices, which means we cannot rule out the possibility the S&P 500 is trying to get into the 450 zone. Now pay attention to the rest of the indices because they did not break out today. So if they're just lagging behind, you could still catch trades in them. But I think there is a chance the S&P 500 is playing some catch up. And a lot of that is going to be due to the financials, which finally got a close above the 200 daily moving average today. So we know the tech sector has been leading the way and the industrials have been very strong as of lately. And we are just now starting to see some strength in the financials. So long story short, this is a reminder it's difficult to short a bull trend. And if we were going to break out of the bull trend, we would have had that lower high into a lower low. And as of today, we are breaking out to a higher high, which is instantly telling us we are still in the bull trend. And even though we could still at some later date get a pullback towards that support, right now is obviously not the day. And the only pullback we're looking for right now is between 436 and 438 to fill the gap. So we're still looking for higher lows and higher highs because the chart tells us to and we're still in the bull trend. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 1.54% today and the triple Qs did not break out to a higher high, but did break above the risk level that I gave you, which was between 367 and 368. And if we zoom in here, you can see we did gap up above that resistance, which instantly told us the price action wanted to go to higher prices. If we were going to get the lower high, I believe we would have rejected below 368 and then came down here towards the breakout between 355 and 347. Obviously, price action is not doing that, and we're already gapping up above the breakout, which was that level right around 365. So at some point in this market, we could fill that gap, put in a higher low, and then continue higher. Now keep in mind, if we get the pullback into the gap, you can't automatically assume we're going higher because there is the odd chance the S&P 500 is doing some type of false breakout move, and it's still going to get a pullback. So I'm not completely ruling out the possibility the triple Qs don't make a higher high and we still get this pullback back down towards 355 or possibly even lower. So when you're following price action, you need to manage your risk at the breakout levels. And right now that breakout level in the triple Qs is above 367. 
As long as we're above 367, there's no reason to believe we're going lower. And the moment we start getting weakness, we are going to see it in the price action and we're going to start seeing the rollover effect. So far, we still have price action above all the moving averages and we still have all of the moving averages with a positive slope, which means we are still in the bull trend. However, that can change very quickly and because the triple Qs have not broken the higher high, we do want to assume there will be very strong resistance between 371 and 372, which means if you are still extremely bearish on this market and you can't help yourself but to try to fade this rally, you want to manage your risk right around 372 because that's the strong resistance the bulls need to break through. So it's a bull trend until it's not and we simply need to let the price action do all the talking, which means we need lower highs and lower lows before we say the bull trend is ending. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.79% today and the Dow Jones also gapped up and closed near the high of the day, which means we have another gap to fill down here right around 341, which is also the breakout zone of that resistance and we still do have the bull trend. So the Dow Jones has resistance now between 345 and 346 with the downside support at the gap fill at 341 and the rising 20 daily moving average right around 340. If we break those support levels, we have critical support at 336. And as you can see, we have bullish price action above all the moving averages and a bull trend. And we did go up on increasing volume today. So we can't rule out the possibility that Dow is trying to break out and go higher. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 0.48% today. And the Russell did hit critical resistance at 188, which is the high we need to break to go hit the next price target higher at 195. As you can see, the small caps did fill the gap up, so they did get rejected from critical resistance and come down and fill the gap, but we do have the bull trend as long as we're trading above 184. Above 184, you can stay on this bull, and the next bull breakout will be above 188, and above 188, I think we start running higher towards 195. Now, you can never rule out the possibility of a double top, so if we do get rejected from 188 and we come all the way back down here and break below the neckline at 180, that is going to be the bearish breakdown for the small caps. But again, that's a long ways away going from 188 all the way down below 180. And then we need the price action to confirm the breakdown to say that we're going to lower prices. So this is still a bull trend. So be careful getting overly bearish. And if you want to get bullish, you can simply wait until we start closing above 188. On the RK ETF, we were up 0.8% today, but we did not break the resistance at 44.5. So similar to the IWM ETF, we need to break that resistance to go to the next price target higher just below 46. Critical support will be right here, right around 43. And if we break down below 43, we're likely coming back down towards 41. On the VIX, we were up 0.3% today, and I'm still leaving this projection on the VIX because I do think we are due for some type of fear because the market is getting a little greedy and a little complacent. And you can see the VIX is bunching up in this zone right around 13.5. Usually when the VIX coils up like this at very low prices, it is eventually going to spring out and you're going to see some type of fear and some type of panic. So even though we're getting bullish price action, just be aware that the VIX is likely hinting we're going to have a little bit of fear into the market, which could take us into the middle of July. However, an easier way to play this is simply wait till the VIX starts breaking out above 15, and that'll likely tell us we're getting this event of volatility. On Bitcoin, we're currently flat, but we've been whipsawing all day long, and intraday we did hit that support at 29,500, and so far we're bouncing off of it and we're back over all the moving averages, but we're still sitting below resistance at 30,500. If we break resistance, we go to 32,000 and then 35,000. And if we break support at 29,000, we go down towards 28,000. It's a bull trend until it's not. And this is starting to look like a bull flag. On Amazon, we were up 1.92%. And as I continue to tell you, it has the bull trend with the price targets at 133 and 134. So stay bullish above 127 to 128. And if we break that, then we could come all the way back down towards 121. On Tesla stock, we're up 1.66% today and we hit that zone of resistance that I'm thinking we're going to get a lower high. And from this lower high, I'm projecting we could come all the way back down towards the gap fill at 235, the breakout at 230, and possibly even the breakout at 215. Again, I was wrong on SPY about the lower high, but who knows if we're going to see it or not in the tech sector. And if we're going to see it in the tech sector, what better way than to see Tesla rolling over from this level? Manage your risk around the resistance between 262 and 268. And if we break out, we can go higher towards 295. On Apple stock, we were up 2.31% today and Apple did prove me wrong yet again because it broke above 190 and I thought that it wouldn't, but above 190, we now have a gap to fill and we're now outside the upper Bollinger Band. So I'm not really sure what's going on in Apple because this is a very exuberant move to the upside above resistance and outside the Bollinger Band. So if I had to guess, and I know this is starting to look redundant, I do think we'll at least come back down and retest that breakout before we go any higher and the next upside target is up there at 197. So again, when you make predictions, you need to be okay with being wrong, and that's why we manage risk. And right now, with Apple gapping up and closing outside the upper Bollinger Band, I think there's an increased risk that we get the pullback. 
But again, above 190, we have the price target at 197, and this is still a very powerful bull trend. On the financials, we were up 0.87% today, and the financials are finally getting that breakout above the 200 daily moving average, which is that level at 33.6. And we also have the gap to fill below because we did gap up. But if we continue to close above the 200 daily moving average and we get a bull trend in the financials, it is going to be very difficult to get bearish on this market because the financials were one of the last pieces of this puzzle. On the industrials, we were up 0.86% today, continuing into that bull trend and continuing to close at higher highs. So this is just another reason why SPY is breaking out. And if we flip over to the monthly chart, we did close the month of June at a higher high. And it's very difficult to look at the industrials breaking out on a monthly chart and still thinking this is a bear market. There's still people that think this is a bear market, but the charts are telling us otherwise. Healthcare sector was up 1.03% today, and we are getting that bounce off of the support zone at 130, and we are well on our way towards the price targets at 134 and then 137, as long as we are above the support at 130, and we are building up the bull trend. The energy sector was up 0.64% today with the second day in a row closing back over the 50 EMA. So you can try to get bullish above 80, knowing that from here we could try to go close the gap below 84. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this was a very bullish breakout today and it was on increasing volume and there's still a lot of shorts that could get squeezed out of this market as SPY tries to climb towards 450. But we do have this giant gap to fill to the downside, which means we could need to pull back to a higher low before we go reach those targets in the 450s. Again, it's a bull trend until it's not. And while you can have predictions on what the market is going to do, you need to instantly be humbled and be proven wrong and be unbiased when the price action proves you incorrect. I gave you my prediction about the lower high on SPY and obviously it was incorrect because we just broke out to a higher high. So we need to move on and we need to continue to look at the chart each and every day and follow the price action. Just remember, no matter what you do, it's most important to manage your risk and no one trade should ever blow up your account. You need to have proper risk management and manage your risk around these critical levels. Also, don't forget I have my own trade alert service called Bank Trade Alerts that will send you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message and only trades the ETFs TQQ and SQQ. I also have the Stock Channel Discord where you can get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis. If you're interested in learning more about either service or want to subscribe, you can find out more information by clicking on the links in the description of this video. So thank you for watching everybody. Everybody. I hope you're crushing this market and as always I will see you in the next episode